There are a few constants throughout the entire Xenoblade series. Immersive worlds, deep storylines, amazing side quests, and giant grows that will destroy you in the starting area. But not every Xenoblade game is created equal, so today we will look at how long it takes to die to Territorial Rothbart, or whomever the resident ape is, in every Xenoblade game. I am a Xenoblade speedrunner, so I sorta know how to go fast. Just in the wrong categories. Normal time start conventions and ending once I wipe to Rothbart, and with that out of the way, let's get started. Xenoblade 1 is where the tradition all started. Here we are starting on Definitive Edition with the usual stuff. Start out the first battle, destroying the Mechon, then going forward a year or two, start bashing wildlife. Along the way to Colony 9, I tried to pick up the required items to get quick step as fast as I could. Didn't go so hot, so time to remember who had the necessary items to trade for. However, since I am not very familiar with any percent runs, I forgot who had the suite with Swabby. Had I changed time tonight, I would have talked to Zukazu and I would have had it, but oh well. We pick up landmarks, help out old man with back pain, go see the Monado, have our lunch delivered to us, skipping all the cutscenes of course, else we would be here for another hour. Once we start setting out from Colony 9, we finally get the last burst for collection, but then I forgot to buy a Rhino weapon. And then I forgot to talk to Genmin for gems. Anyways, we make it to Taffer Cave, bash some mechs, watch our hometown catch on fire. We make it back and get into our first battle with the Mechon. I remember from my time in Hondo to let Ryan do hammer beat before breaking. We dispatch the Mechon in record time and fight a second wave of Mechons. Playing on casual, otherwise it would be take a lot of grinding just to make it past the machines and rack the boss next chapter. And yeah, casual mode does break this fight with the power of chains, which I will take since the first fight on the bridge is a nightmare. After that battle, we get Dunband, carve through the remaining Mechon, pass the Monado to Shulk, Fight an enemy that is immune to the Monado, and the fight is pretty over quick, we move on to the next dungeon. Jeffrey goes pretty south when you face a lot of spiders. They were really fixated on Shulk, and I nearly died a couple times, but managed to pull through. We make it through, a beast chain attacks to destroy the queen, and make it onto the Bionis leg. Territorial Rothbart was really far away on his track, so it took a bit of time to catch up, but we engaged with that, and touched our first Rothbart. <laughs> The Xenoblade feature connected is our first side story, and the side stories don't really have a turtle wrapper per se, but they do have a strong Google tucked away pretty far, so I will count them. Feature connected requires a bit of story progress to unlock them, roughly shy of half a feature connected story, so we got some work to do. Thankfully, feature connected is short, and you can beat it in about half an hour. We crash into the bionic shoulder, touch water, save some Nopon from Vols, and head towards the settlement. I grab an HP plus gem from the deposit since the ponies fight up ahead can be a bit of a pain. We grab the, our first of two upon specters, make a pit stop for later, and make our way into Alchemoth. We grab our other upon specter just for experience so we can live to ponios. Here we encounter our first fog beast which has the habit of calling reinforcements. After exiting Alchemoth we run into a lab, then make our way to a grand dell stopping at a landmark for later, then we go fight the ponios. Ponios can be a nuisance since they have a lot of attacks that can bleed or knock you back. Thankfully the ponios behaved as we slay them. Then we turn back to Old King's Testament. Ponios were a prerequisite, so fog beasts can spawn all across the shoulder, and Contemptuous Grey Mane is one of them. And also a fun fact about Contemptuous Grey Mane is the second highest level enemy in Future Connected also. First attempt, the bunnets fumble me for Grey Mane even laid a finger on me. Second try, I fight from behind, get one shot, and touch our second rock bar. <laughs> Now for the best Xenoblade game in the series that isn't controversial at all. Xenoblade X. Too bad it is stuck on the Wii U for all eternity. Starting out, we make our character. Perfect. Name a totally not original name and get started. My experience with Xenoblade X is pretty lacking. I 100% of the game back in 2018 and haven't touched it since. After we crash onto this very weird planet, we hop our way out of the wreckage and head onto the magnificent Primordia and continue hopping towards our destination. Along the way, I fight a few sewage just so I have enough experience to take on the Grexes. They go down without much fuss, and we enter NLA. We go through a lot of cutscenes, I mean, a lot. We get our base, look at pretty options, but our goal is clear. Exiting Mira by way of Barbarossa, the Territorial. Thankfully, we don't have to do a lot of story. Once we get our first real mission from Nagi, we make our way out of NLA, head down the road, and meet this magnificent beast who doesn't see us at first. We bop him a couple times, and we get sent to the afterlife and touch our third rock bar. Next on the list is Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and this rock bar is pretty quick. I have some experience with 80%, so I know how early game works. We bash a crust up a few times, make our way onto our gentum, get a fat stack of money, send it home, I forgot where it was, and do a bit of salvaging. Our haul wasn't very good. After that, we went upstairs and bought some fish, paid to win, 
bought the better Narsapair jelly, and headed out onto the Maelstrom. After some dialogue, we arrive on the ancient vessel, let Jin and Malos carry the first fight, and perform a skip skipping all of the ancient vessel. I still got it after years of not running. The Alago goes pretty well, we meet Pyra, mess up inputs on Malos, and arrived in Gormot. We navigated the lowlands, fought a brog, and headed out onto the plains. It is a straight shot towards Rockbart, and get deleted to next week with another Rockbart have been touched. Xenoblade Chronicles Torn of the Golden Country takes place 500 years prior to Xenoblade 2, so Rodbart hasn't existed yet. However, its ancestor does exist in Gormat, so time to speedrun the early game. We fight off the local wildlife again, make way to a burnt down village, collect some food stuff, forget to level up, and head towards Fentley Village. Yeah, I'm not happy I forgot to level. Fighting a level 8 boss at level 2 goes as well as you expect. Quick rest and gargoyle goes down pretty quickly, and get 3 free levels in the process too. Adam and Mithra go down with little effort, and we clear out some miasma. Down the pathway, we encounter our first community, which we promptly ignore, and headed onto Gormont. Turned off enemy aggression so we can make our way to the back part without getting deleted by level 40 enemies prematurely. We climb the vine, encountered erratic Goliante Susan away, we wake it up and get deleted, and another one off the list. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is next up on the list, so we dive right on in and have a snooze fest of a time with the tutorial fights. They took it way too safe with tutorials in the first chapter and it is a slog to get through. After fighting through the first battle, it is more required tutorial fights as we make our way back to Colony 9 by doing extravagant activities like standing in a circle to heal, stabbing bandits from behind, breaking bandits, and arriving back in town. Not too much to note here, we do a tutorial quest that lets us quit out of a menu without saying quit out of menu. Some collection out of the way, we head onto the plains and make our way to some wolves, and have the hardest fight of the game, a random ropple. We break the ropple, we break the ropple, and Lance almost died but we made it out in one piece. Nothing to note heading into Alfredo Valley, Agnes group behaved for the most part, though Uni almost died. Mobius wasn't too much to talk about thankfully, and Phase 2 went down pretty quick. More walking and cutscenes, we make our way into Melek Meadow and encountering an abomination to rob our kind. It is not named Rothbart and is not level 81. Well, we fight Jingoistic Gigantus, get cleared out one by one, and another Gogol off the list. And last up on our list is the fastest, and that is Xenoblade Chronicles Future Redeem. After a quick tutorial battle or two, we make our way onto a little valley, a couple of tutorials on the way, nowhere near Xenoblade 3's level, and make our way into a cave, and get deleted by Bombastic Rockbar Jr. It is seriously that fast. And here is the final times of all the Rockbarts. This was fun going through the Xenoblade games, and looking how they do tutorials, and how long it takes in each. If you liked what went on, go ahead and leave a like and comment on what you might want to see later on. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next one.